What's up guys? So we're day two here. Uh, we made some good progress. The, I, I feel like we didn't have a full day on it yesterday, but as you can see, we got the interior stripped out here. Uh, for the most part, we're gonna leave the door panels on because I wanna know, like I wanna leave that stuff in while we're tacking the cage together. Um, now I didn't have to go through all this trouble if I wasn't with my future plans of the car or how fast we wanna go. Like, I definitely, I could have kept the interior in it and we could have just put in a roll bar. But uh, because we have to put in a full cage in it, we, we had to take the, the interior out. And I'll show you a few things that we gotta do because of the cage we are putting in and other things too. And hit that subscribe button. Let's get up to 100,000 subscribers on the channel and uh, and yeah, we're gonna do some awesome stuff with this car, guys. So right down here, we're gonna have to notch out the floor here to get our tube to go through. Um, also, back here, um, we'll have to do it somewhere to tie it into the frame. But also, one reason I had to take out the, the back seat was because when we mini tub this, like that tub comes all the way into about here. So we're gonna have to adjust, like cut the floor and do some work in here. Um, it's something I've never done, but we're gonna try it. We're gonna see what we can do. There's definitely a learning curve to this and I'm really hoping that, uh, that I pick up on it quick cause yeah, there's a lot to do here. But yeah, we're day two um, and it, you can see here the like, so we, we did put new suspension on it, but with what we're doing with it, we're, we are gonna upgrade the suspension. Uh, the back end, we are, we got plans for that. I think we're gonna put a Ford nine inch in it. I know, I know, sacrilegious to put Ford parts in a Chevy, but the nine inch is a great diff and, uh, and it makes things easier for, for us. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get uh, tearing this dash out because I need, so the dash has to come out because I need a bar that goes across here behind the dash. So we're gonna, we're gonna try and hide it in there so that you can't see it. That's kind of the whole, we want this to be a sleeper car. So the more we can hide on it, the better, so. We'll uh, we'll get get going here. I got to take all this sticky uh, sound deadening stuff out of here too. So I'm gonna do that, and I'll be back with you. So all this floor stuff, I've stripped a lot of cars, a lot for derby, different things. And one thing that I found that takes this stuff off real easy. Like a lot of guys will use like dry ice or something like that. Just a gasket scraper. I mean, scrapes it off, leaves a little bit of the tar behind or whatever it is that's attaching it, but it works great. And we're putting in, I don't know what it's called yet. I got to order it, but we'll be, like we're a ways away from from sound deadening the the cab here, because I mean, with what we're putting in this thing, it's gonna be noisy in here. So once we get this stuff out, we'll uh, give the interior a, a bit of a vacuum, get some of the mouse poos out of here, and. Uh, We'll start taking taking the dash pieces out and uh, start getting getting everything out of here. I'm not sure how these dashes on these set like these 71 Chevelles come out if they're bolt in or welded in like some of the uh, full size cars from the 70s. So uh, that's a problem for future Sean. One thing I did forget to bring down with me was Ziploc bags. What do you need Ziploc bags when you're fixing a car? 
bag and tag everything. Um, I have been on this project when I started two years ago. I got bags of stuff, but I didn't use a, a marker that would stick. So now I got a bunch of bags of stuff that I don't know what's what because the, the markers came off. So, but that's another problem for future Sean. Future Sean's gonna have lots of problems here. <laughs> There we go, that's the last of it guys. So we'll get this swept out and we'll vacuum it out and, and uh, we can take a closer look out of it, at it. Once we get this panel off here, we can, uh, then we can get this wiring pulled out. Cause I don't really wanna be working around that the whole time on this build. So uh, we'll get that pulled out and we'll go from there. Okay, so we got it all cleaned out and this car made a liar out of me sake um i said there was no rust but it's very minimal i'll show you oh right here is one little spot and same on the other side and what that is is it's a cross brace on the floor that i knew on the bottom side it's rusty and i know i gotta fix that but i didn't know it came through the floor so we do have to fix that but we're gonna get started on this dash and one of the best things you can have in your shop when you are pulling something like this apart and it's gonna be apart for more than like a day and you aren't gonna remember where things go is some Ziploc bags. And so basically I gotta, I gotta bag up all this stuff, but put your parts in a bag, label it, and you put it in a box and you know what it is. Make sure you got a good marker that ain't gonna come off of the bag. So I have a whole box here full of parts from the front end, all the wiring in the front, which I'm pretty sure a lot of that isn't gonna get used because we'll, be, uh, we'll be putting some new wiring into this thing with what we're doing. But basically we're just trying to get the interior done. So let's go. Okay, so we're gonna take this dash out. Yeah, um, ideally I wouldn't have had to take the dash out, but I want to hide my dash bar for my roll cage behind the dash. So in order to do that, I got to take the dash pad out. Um, being how old it is, the guy's got to be super careful not to break it. But uh, it should be just, I think it's six bolts and then it just lifts up and slides out. And then we should be able to, work on on the rest of the dash so we'll uh, see if we can figure this out okay so we got the dash pad off and so these are the little clips I was talking about you gotta be careful because if they fall off they're like those They'll just fall into oblivion and you won't be able to find them. But we would have been able to find, yeah, actually we would have been able to because we're taking the whole dash out. So uh, yeah, but this thing is in really good shape. There's no cracks in it like other cars that I've torn apart. So we're gonna keep at it. All right, so we're slowly getting this dash pulled out, but uh, I am gonna take the steering column off or the, like the steering shaft so that I can pull the steering column out. Um, it's just gonna make it way easier to get the dash completely out. I'm hoping to leave the, um, the windshield in, but, because I don't wanna wreck it. I don't wanna have to reinstall it. I'm trying to, like we're on a timeline here, but uh, there's gonna be certain things that we're gonna do like but once we get this cage in here and to get up into the tight areas to weld we're actually gonna lift the so we'll have the cage down on the frame but we'll lift the body up up off of the frame so that so that our cage is about here and we can weld everything and then once once everything's welded out cleaned up and the tops painted or treated I'm not sure if I'm gonna paint the cage or what I'm gonna do with it. Um, 
I don't know if you guys want to see me doing everything. Uh, I, I'm trying to show what you can do yourself. Like I, I'm not a mechanic and that's a big misconception. Everyone thinks I'm a mechanic and I'm not. I'm just a, just a welder. I do have some mechanical skills, I guess, because I like I run in demolition derby. That's really uh, taught me a lot. I can tear a car down and build a derby car and all that fun stuff, but I've never put one back together. So <laughs> this is uh, that's why I'm labeling absolutely everything so that I can pull a bag out and I can be like, okay, this is where it goes or this is what it's for. Or when I get to a certain stage in the and putting the car back together, I can see, okay, I need to look for this part or this bag. So, um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna get going on getting this dash out the rest of the way, and we gotta pull pull the um, back part out of the window here because that's where a cage is gonna go through and tie into the top of the frame. Uh, right on top of where shock mounts will be and then with what we're doing to the frame that won't affect then we're not losing any strength everything's gonna be tied into the cage so um, we got a lot of stuff to do here but it's gonna be fun guys we're gonna you can follow along on the build and uh, yeah you'll see it uh, at tracks in Alberta You'll see it on some dragon drives. Hopefully, um, probably not Miles of Mayhem just because I don't know if the scheduling will work for us, but you are gonna see the car in around Alberta. You'll see it down the States too. Um, we've been asked a couple, several times of when the car is gonna be done for a couple shows down the States. So. It will be done in time for those shows. And the idea of this is anyone can build what I'm, what I'm building, anyone. It, you don't need $200,000 to build yourself a race car. I'm building this and uh, it's just proof that anyone can get into the track, onto the track and have fun. So that's where we're at. That's what we're trying to do. Um, so yeah, keep following along. Okay, so after some fighting, we got the dash out. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. If I'm gonna keep the heater in it, like I mean, keep that, or if I'm gonna put like vintage air in it or something like that, because AC would be cool to have for sure, but I don't know that I'm gonna need heat in it. Because I'm not gonna be running the car in the winter. Like, ain't no way it's gonna be on the road in the winter. But I wanna be comfortable if it is cool, so. I don't know, maybe we would just put a little space heater in it. <laughs> but yeah, we got her stripped out here, so we're, so the next thing, we're gonna get this, uh, this back panel out on the, on the wind, the rear window. And uh, we'll get that back panel out and I don't know if there's any speakers back there. I don't think there is. And then we'll take out these panels here. We're gonna leave the headliner for now just cause I'm not 100% sure if I need to take it out. I, I hope I don't have to, but um, I'm gonna start working on getting this body off. We're gonna pull the back bumper um, and stuff like that. And then we can start lifting the body. And then all the fabrication starts, all the fun stuff. So we're taking the bumper off. And I like to use a ratchet. And like, I'd rather use a ratchet than an impact because I can feel what the bolt's doing. Um, I don't know. My dad used to always give me shit. Well, why are you using a ratchet? Why aren't you using the impact? This and this and this and well, right here. Start to tighten up and you can you can feel what it's doing. Like you can tell if it's if it's gonna bind up and and uh, and break off. Like, so it's starting to right now, like bind right up. So 
So you can you can adjust for it. Spray some stuff in there. Use some power lube. Get in there. So if it binds up, what you can do, spray some stuff in it and then run it back in. And then that stuff will get into where it needs to get. And you'll be able to, to work the bolts a little bit and get them out. Um, I love this power lube, it, but uh, yeah, I'll get this bumper off. I'm starting to see a little more rust than I want to see in some spots that I don't want to see it. So, see, look how easy it is now. It's always when the camera isn't running. Decided to take tail lights out so I didn't break them. What? No way. Fuck's sake. Well, I guess we'll be looking for tail lights. Here's a little tip for you. If you're so, if you're looking at a classic car and you don't know what year it is, you can't see it on anything. If you look at the tail lights. So right in there on the tail lights, it's hard to read, but it says a 71. So they always, they put the the year vehicles on the tail lights, so that makes it easy. So I gotta find some more. These ones are a little bit faded and they got a bunch of spray paint on them from the kids, from when my kid decided he wanted to paint my car, but um, yeah. I'm trying to get the bumper off now. Okay, so this piece here is pretty bent, beat up, rusty, and a bolt up there is not working. So I think this is where the grinder comes out and we could do some cutting. Cut the thing off and i don't know maybe i'll i'll make my own i don't know the bolts are not moving so that's that's where we're at into the chrome but the chrome is pretty beat up I think we're gonna chrome delete this and probably paint it we're still trying to figure out a color for this thing we gotta figure out a name too what do you what do you think for a name I don't know the kids like slime car uh, I seen one the other day the oh, what was it the crewville or Cruvel, yeah, Cruvel, Cruvel, <laughs> like, you know, Cru, Cru Cab, Chevelle, Cruvel, ha, <laughs> all It needs something here because I don't like looking at the frame. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I could add on to the bumper and just bring it down and curl it. I don't know. I've always wanted to build my own body panels. Maybe we'll try. I don't have tools for it, but no one likes a quitter. Okay. Bumpers off, as you can see, we got some rust in under here, and um, 
There is basically no paint left on the frame. We are gonna get the frame sandblasted and we are gonna, um, we're gonna use body liner on the frame because I live on gravel and I would actually like to coat the underneath, but I don't know. I'll have to talk to the body liner guys and see, but I'm also finding some Bondo in this thing too, so ah, I might be in over my head. We'll see. <laughs> All right, end of day two. Queen's been staying in the warm shop with me today. It's minus 30 out and we've made some good progress here. We got up on jack stands now. We're gonna be pulling the body off, hopefully, maybe tomorrow, we'll see. But uh, we got the interior, it's all gutted out. Um, except for the door panels. I'm leaving the door panels because when I built the cage, I wanna be able to see where my armrests are so that I, the cage doesn't interfere with with uh with the armrests but uh yeah dash came out really good there is a mouse living in there as it ran from the trunk into the behind the vent so i'm gonna figure out if i'm gonna put vintage air in it or something like that i, I kind of like ac in the in the car i don't know if i need heat uh come to the back here we got the bumper off we pulled out two body mounts and so if you look if you look at this one that is a nice bolt it's still all structurally there we're getting new body mounts for it but it came out nice the other side on the other hand this is what it looks like so 